So, so firstly, Dan, uh, 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 it's an absolute pleasure to, to have you and to chat to you. Uh, you've been a good friend and a great guide and mentor in many ways uh, on many complex issues on behavioral science. Um, just to make it clear, just you are the go-to guy on this stuff. The, the <laughs> James Duke professor at Duke University of, of Psychology, Behavioral Economics. You've written, I think, three New York Times bestsellers. Uh, you've been quoted in so many issues. Your, your resume goes who knows to where, but, but I mean, the fact is you're the go-to guy in my, in, in, in my, in my mind on the issues of motivation, rationality, irrationality. So I, I've set this ridiculous goal right, of at 58 running a five minute mile. It's, it's mad. It's obtuse to my day's activities, but the, the reason I, I'm doing it is number one, I mean, obviously given our work in vitality, um, the idea of physical activity and promoting that and encouraging that is fundamental. But there's a much bigger issue is kind of encouraging goal setting, um, and especially in difficult times where people are, are bogged down and worried and anxious all over the world. So, so it's, it's, it's been a, it's, it's a mad idea, but, but it really is interesting. And, and that's why having you uh, to talk to is, is a real treat and a pleasure. I mean, I guess just, just to start with, you really have an insight into motivation and into the cognitive errors around how people often miss the power of motivation, how to motivate themselves and others. I mean, great to hear your views. Yeah, so uh, it sounds like we should all know how motivation works. So we've all lived for a while. We try to motivate ourselves. We failed. We try to motivate others and we failed. And, and uh, the, the reality is that the real drivers of um, motivation often elude us. Uh, it's very clear in the workplace uh, where, for example, we find that uh, companies think that people are motivated by salaries and it turns out it's not so true um, people are motivated a lot by fairness of salary uh, it turns out that people are motivated a lot by feeling appreciated again you don't see many people uh, trying to use the power of compliments uh, to get people uh, to be motivated um, and also when it comes to ourselves uh, we're not really uh, big, we don't have a lot of insights about what motivates us. We don't understand short-term motivation and we don't understand long-term motivation. Absolutely. I mean, I, I'm intrigued with, with the issue of setting goals. I mean, what, what I found in this issue here is, I mean, our hypothesis was that in setting a goal, you evoke loss aversion. And I feel it in this. Yeah. As I've set this goal and I've now got something to lose and I kind of, <laughs> really am worried though you know it's yep. really inspiring but i mean setting a goal uh evokes this this kind of the sudden activity enough your life is different in a way but a question on on you've written a lot about pain and challenge in in motivation mountaineering and running as well i mean you made the point now but it's not the easiest thing but what is the it's paradoxical but we need that pain what, what is it in your understanding yeah so so, so let's let's think about goals a little bit, and then and then talk about talk about pain. Uh, you have done a, a couple of things when you've set a goal. Goal is is not always just one one thing. It's just saying, oh, five five minutes. That's it. I've set it up. Uh, a goal uh, uh, gives you some some target. We'll we'll come back to this, uh, but it also gives you a plan of getting to it. Right? If if the plan was uh, very specific, uh, it's much more likely to be carried out. Um, you know, most people, you put something in a calendar, there's a good chance you'll, you'll do it. It's not in the calendar, good chance you will not do it. If, if you have a goal, the odds are that you've worked out the details of what you're going to do, or you, you're forced to work out the details. So, you know, if I, if I tell you, you know, what's your plan for becoming healthy? You say, oh, in general, I'll eat better and exercise more. You know, it doesn't get more concrete than that. The moment you have a goal, uh, you have to fill the details out. You can't just say, I, I have a goal of uh, running a mile in, uh, in five minutes and then say, it will happen <laughs> as long as I, I wake up. No, you, you have to, to make the details. And, of course, the detail is where... Uh, things meet in our lives. We start making trade-offs. We start clearing time. We start making, making progress. So goals are not just about the end. They're about the path, the fact that they create, uh, create a plan. And, and you've also used uh, us, your followers, <laughs> um, 
as, as commitment mechanism. Uh, because if you make a goal just for yourself, it's just for yourself and sometimes we, <laughs> we're not as, uh, I would say, ah, you know, maybe, maybe it was not, I didn't mean five, I really meant something else. But, but if you commit to other people as a, as a public, uh, as a public uh, commitment, uh, that helps, that helps consolidate it. So actually, your, your uh, public, public announcement of that is, is, is helping you in that. Now, in terms of the, the part about pain and, and complexity and uh, challenges, you know, we have, we have this simplified notion that uh, happiness means sitting on a beach drinking mojito. If people could only do what they want, kind of they own the U.S. Constitution, the right to pursue happiness, that's happiness, uh, sitting on the beach drinking mojito. But that's not true. If you talk about what really drives happiness and if you talk, if you talk to people about what is it about their life that was worthwhile, most of the things are very different. It's things like starting companies and writing books and having kids and running marathon and climbing mountains and doing all kinds of things that are difficult and, com and, and challenging and painful. And, you know, when people run marathons, they don't smile in the middle. They don't kind of burst in laughter. It doesn't feel like they're, they're having fun, but of course, they're having a very different sense of fun. But the fact that it's challenging and complex is what is going to give you extra motivation. Uh, around it. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that's regard, how, if you follow that logic, how, how stretch, I mean, I've chosen a five minute mile. It's a bizarre, it has nothing to do with my day job. It's a mad thing in five minutes. It seems now from the data and my pretty poor physical state, it's unlikely I can achieve it, but it's a massive stretch. How, in setting a goal, how, is, it, is it better to set a, a really stretch goal that you've got a small chance of getting there? Or is it better to set a goal that you probably going to get there that's you know is it is it demotivating to set a very stretch goal that you may miss well, what is the optimizing point in it? yeah um so so generally goals that are way too far um can have a negative effect uh, it also depends on how much time you have for it so let's say um i i personally never ran more than 10 kilometers um, 10 is tough um, let's say I created a goal to run a marathon and let's say it was a, a goal to do it in a year from now. Uh, if it, if it was a goal and I created a plan toward it for a big part of the year, it would be motivating. Why? It would still be far off. I would make progress and it would be motivating. But, but let's say if it was too much, that it was something uh, beyond my ability, uh, then toward the second part of the year, maybe the last 30 or 40% of the year, when it would be clear that I'm not going to make that goal, it would be demotivating. So, so we, we ideally want goals that are achievable, that are achievable. And by the way, in your, in your case, the fact that you've uh, committed publicly uh, to that to that goal that would keep you going uh, even if you would not have the, the the same intrinsic motivation the public shame um would would be would be substantial <laughs> but shame is the shame is the, <laughs> the the correct uh description of failing spectacularly but yes yeah um but but there's a so so i would say it's it's good to have a goal that that stretches you a bit but not too much let me, let me ask you on the goal what's interesting since i've set this challenge i've had so much feedback um from people and it's been unbelievable i mean that's been the idea to encourage people to set goals they're not all physical goals they mm -hmm. some people are going to do a phd i had the most unbelievable stuff what's interesting though this goal for me is an adjacency. I mean, I've, I've got a job to do. It's, this is just fun on the side. But it, it kind of setting an, uh, an adjacent goal to my real life is interesting. But I've been intrigued by being, you know, I've had people write me, one woman wrote me about having a terrible uh, illness that she really suffered through the treatment for. And now on the back of this challenge, she's going to run a mile. It kind of seems bizarre to me because, I mean, it's touching, but what she's been through is profound. What she's managed to survive is profound. But there's some virtue in setting a goal almost outside of your day-to-day, -day, you know, 
struggle in whatever it yeah. is that you're doing, whether it's a difficult job. And I, I felt the same in this case as well. I've got a lot to do in my own world. This opens up a whole new vista. So, I mean, is there yeah. something in setting a goal that's largely irrelevant in a way? It's, it's kind of noble, but irrelevant. Um, so, so there could be lots of goals. Uh, goals uh, do give us a, a purpose. They focus attention. Right? It goes back to the thing that you, that you have somewhere that guides you and then you have an action plan uh, toward it. And uh, waking up with a plan is incredibly important. Right? So yeah. um, uh, you and I are friends with uh, Dvorah and Ben Korn. And uh, one of the things that they do is they take people with terminal illness and uh, they give them what they call hope. And, and the hope in, in their vocabulary is not about beating the disease is about finding a reason to live and and a reason to live um, is is an objective that they want to accomplish and multiple potential paths for getting there and agency uh, to to make to make the progress and this is in many ways the the foundations of of a life worth living it's central to life from the perspective of having agency and control and a plan for the day and a feeling of progress and so on. And we, all, we should all have those. And there are some things that, that are easier. Uh, you remember we talked in, in early COVID days, we talked a lot about what people can do in lockdowns and so on. And, and one of the things we recommended was an exercise that people can feel improvement on. In, in, in a world in which so much control was taken away from us. Um, we mm. Couldn't, mm. couldn't move outside. You know, there were lots, lots of things that were shocking in terms of the, the, the loss of control. Uh, having a physical activity that we could feel improvement on, like mm. plank or uh, uh, push-ups or sit-ups or things like that was, was very, very helpful because we could, we could get... Uh, we could get the progress. So anyway, the point is that goals are not just a point. There's a, it's a statement. It's a statement about agency. It's a statement about control. It's a, a way to create a sense of progress, achievement. So from all of those things, we should all have goals uh, all the time in, in all kinds of aspects. Uh, they give us points, they give us action plan, they give us a sense of control. So they're very important. And, you know, in the, in the, the workplace, uh, often give us goals. Quarterly reports, uh, there's uh, deadlines, all kinds of things are happening. In our personal lives, we mostly don't have those. So, uh, so, so we, need, we need an extra little help. Uh, in that in that regard like if you think about the workplace um in as an evolutionary mechanism that have evolved over time to help us all all get motivated right the workplace was not designed like this it, it changed over time in all kinds of ways uh, deadlines and and goals and you know uh, have have been a, a part of that because it's very helpful to consolidate motivation it's fascinating. I mean, you, you're really touching on a, a very deep issue. And that's actually been the hope of our kind of setting as goal is just to get people to set goals is life changing. Because I don't know. I mean, it's anecdotal, but most people I deal with don't have goals. I don't know. And certainly as you get older, you, you know, I have a breakfast club that's met for 30 years. In our early years, we were all deciding how to do this, how to build that, how to, you know, as the, the narrative has changed to one of just accepting your fate in a sense if you set a goal, 60 at 70, whatever, you can almost, life is meaning. I mean, getting to your point. Yep. It's a fundamental tool, but no one uses it. Is, yep. that, is that correct? Uh, well, people do use it, but certainly not enough. Certainly not enough. And I think the, the last you know, period of COVID has uh, taken a lot. You know, I, I haven't been to South Africa for a while, but, but my sense is that there's lots of things in the world that people are, just have some general Malay uh, post, post COVID, kind of um, a general uh, d depression feeling. If you look in the, in social media, people are also seem to be more, 
more unhappy and uh, aggressive. And uh, I, th mm -hmm. I think there's just a, there's a general sense that we haven't yet come to term with of what it means to be so much time in isolation and, and such, such a big change to, to how we function. <clears throat> so, so I think coming out of that, it's probably extra important. So, you know, it's a little hard to, to kind of rewind our memory and say, what was it exactly four years ago? Uh, and not, not get confused by this very, very long, um, uh, painful, pa painful period. Um, but I think that, yes, having, having uh, goals are incredibly important. And you can't have them too long, right? Because if you have a goal that says, oh, in 10 years, I'll do that. What exactly is the plan? What do you need to start uh, today? How would the progress uh, look like? So, so we, need, we need to think about goals, not just as, as points, but as action plans. And, and if they are not at the right length and the right distance, they don't create the action, the action plans. Very powerful. I think running, you know, as, as tough as it is, has that quality in the sense that you do, you do feel improvements very quickly no matter what your state of health is. In fact, in many cases, being less fit, the increments are better. But, um, you know, just, just one point, Dan, about... By the uh, way, that's, that's also very important for the motivation, right? It's very important um, for people to realize that... Um, we, we said there's a plowing through. Um, <clears throat> uh, so, so when I started uh, running, I'm, I'm not running a lot, but I'm running a little bit. And when, when I do that, when I started, um, I set up... Uh, my goal, um, I set up my goal to, to, to run 8, 8K, uh, but I said to myself that on a daily basis, I'm not um, going to run 8K, I couldn't. I basically say, I'm going to go out for an hour. I'm going to go out for an hour and I'll run what I can and I'll walk what I can't. And I basically said that I'm going to go for an hour because I said there's going to be the period when I'm going to just try to build up to it. It will be a while. And if I said I'll just run until I can't run anymore, it will sometimes be too short. Uh, it will not take the same amount of time on my calendar. And I said, look, I'm, I'm generally very busy, but if I said I'll do an hour and I'll run and then I, I can't, I'll walk, I, I'll run a bit more, I'll walk and so on. The hour would be there in my calendar. And that hour in the calendar is a big, is a big part of that because if we, we need to make time for those things. Uh, if, yeah. if you basically say, oh, you know, I'll, I'll make plans for running this week. What's next week? When, when is the time going to come from? So we need, we need to clear time. And, and if we're building up towards something, it's very useful from the beginning to give it all the amount of time that it needs. Mm -hmm. uh, so that later on, you don't get to a situation where you say, oh, you know, I, I could run more than half an hour, but I didn't schedule more than half an hour. I have to go back and, and go to a meeting. So, so also thinking about time constraint and making sure that we build it in our schedule is incredibly important. You know, I mean, just, just to, I've now got a training schedule with a coach. <laughs> I've never done that, but to your point, it's broken the goal down. I'm not thinking about the ultimate goal. It's what I have to do today, the time is scheduled. You know, it's an amazingly powerful. So listen, the, the hypothesis here is, is we set out to do this as a team, and I'm, I'm now on the road, is, is this idea that setting goals changes your life. I, I feel it. As, you know, I've got a lot to do in my own professional life. It's just this has opened up a whole... And I've seen from the feedback I've had from literally thousands of people, it's remarkable how a, a goal can be a tonic, you know, and life is never the same afterwards, you know, no matter how yep. bizarre the goal is. Um, but listen, getting, getting your insights, Dan, as, as always, is just uh, is remarkable and very, very grateful to you. My, my pleasure and a, a very early morning here from, from Iceland and uh, lovely to see you as always. I kind of feel it, fail or not. I will not be the same again. I mean, that's the main thing. Very good. I'll follow. I'll Listen. follow you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And travel well. Very good. Thanks for lovely. Time, lovely thank to you. see you as always. Bye. You too.